All right, welcome to Derby Dust. Today I'm going to show you how to make these out of this stuff. Cross slide table with vice, um, a drill press, and then in Machinist World this is called an end mill. Um, it is a fancy drill bit that has cutters on the side um, and a cutter on the bottom. So this allows you to uh, move in two different or three different directions technically all at the same time and have it cut. Um, if you don't want to use this fancy bit, um, I know Harbor Freight sells them, but if you want to try something more local, you could probably get away with using a router bit um, at, at your local hardware store. Um, this is a 732nd, so I, I tend to like this one the most. Um, you can use a larger or smaller. Um, the only thing to just reference yourself is the smaller you go, the uh, smaller the cut, the slower the cut you need to do. Because what will happen is that the metal will flex and it will break. Um, wood's kind of picky. It likes to mill in one direction really clean and then get rough in another direction. So just be aware. Go slow. That's the process. Um, mount your vise and then make sure that your vise is traveling parallel in one direction at least and what I mean by that is that uh, I'm using a smaller drill bit and I drew a line a straight line and my drill bit's pretty center but you can see that line that goes straight and basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that your your bit stays pretty much center on that line throughout your travel um, we're not talking about precision stuff here we're talking about just simple uh, pinewood derby bodies and as you can see the bit hopefully you can see the bit stays center on the line throughout the travel so with that done we're going to look at the second point is our depth um, depending on what you want to do this is uh, on this this type of particular model this has a depth gauge that is adjustable sorry about that so I can adjust how deep I want it to travel by moving this one up and down and as you can see it doesn't throw very far when I do it that way if I adjust it back it'll throw deeper and this model also has a, or what I call a hold, where if I move that forward, it stays in one position. And that's, that's a key important part about um, using these drill presses to do that, is that we're going to have to be able to hold, hold our depth. And see, and then I can sandwich that and it's going to stay still. Now, if you have one of these smaller models, like this model, um, it, you, you can see that it doesn't have any particular way to hold it down. What you'll have to do is you just have to take it apart. And you can either go to Lowe's, Home Depot, your hardware store, whatever, buy a new nut. That'll fit that. And basically you're just going to have to retrofit that extra piece that I showed you earlier. Two nuts on top, that just makes it lock in place so that it doesn't vibrate out. But as you can see, just by swapping some simple nuts out, I got that mill lock spindle lock whatever you want to call it in place so if I want to hold it at a certain depth let's just say a quarter inch I can easily adjust this up and down and then you have sp spindle lock and that's the important part so back to the big one we're gonna put this in place as you can see I already have some drawings done. Um, I find that if you've got a really steady hand, you can mill up as close to about 3 16th from the edge. Um, 
that shouldn't give you any kind of problems with slots. Um, if you don't have a steady hand, I would highly suggest maybe just doing it a quarter inch from each side. That way when you go to install your axles, it doesn't break. Uh, this is how I used to do it for the longest time, except I used some other fancy machines, just like a little, uh, here's my little mill, and then there's the bigger one. Um, I am a working machinist, meaning that this is not a hobby. I don't usually clean up after myself, so pardon my mess. Wood likes to go really fast, meaning that it, the bits work so much better when they're sharp and traveling fast so make sure you're going at least well I'm not gonna lie make sure you can go as fast as your your drill can go routers go tens of thousands of rpms per minute uh, this drill I don't know how fast this drill goes anyway okay so make sure you got all your safety gig gig goggles and ears and all that gear on and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to plunge. Um, plunge allows clearance. So we're going to plunge. And I got to mark about a quarter of an inch. We're going to plunge the complete depth that we're planning on going. So that's about as deep as I'm going to go. I'm going to. You see here, I'm going to lock my depth so I can't go any deeper. And the easiest to do is just to plunge, plunge cut all four corners. And what that's going to allow you to do is just, when it comes to that corner, you can turn the corner and not have to worry about wood breaking because you'll find that wood likes to break when you force it. Sorry about crossing the table. I'm not particularly fond of this cross device. It's got a, what we call a lot of play in it. That is just makes a sloppy job. Okay, so now that I've plunge cut all those, I'm going to adjust my depth so that it'll hold. I want it to hold about right there. So now, locking it in place. And this, we're going to go slow. So, as you can see, this is pretty easy. Come to that corner. And you just go back and forth. Um, I've got air compressor hooked up, so this makes it easy. I'm tired of inhaling sawdust by blowing and sucking air. And that's how you do it. It's going to take some time. That's how you make all the nice, pretty pockets. Cross tables, the vices kind, you can get them off of eBay for 30, 40, 50 bucks ship. Um, they're neat little tools. Um, your drill presses, you know, those run you 70, 80 bucks. If you've got a friend that has one, it's great. Y'all share it, share the price in a vice. 